Lance Emery has a passion for sustainable production. He runs Mill Farm in Nashua, in the New South Wales Northern Rivers region with his wife, Ina. The farm's 40 productive acres are on very steep country, and over the years, Lance has worked hard maximising ground cover and minimising erosion. This farm here is about 40 hectares of macadamias, and it's been developed over a lot of years. We've concentrated a lot on putting mulch on, lots and lots of mulch, and we've put in a lot of drains to keep the water off. They are hard to work with, probably the only way to control water flow. Trying to keep grass in the orchard is challenging. We're able to do it fairly well with tree removal, limb removal and that sort of thing now. This work has allowed Lance to reap the rewards, with yields increasing from season to season, despite the orchard containing many of old Hawaiian cultivars and despite some very challenging seasons of extreme wet or extreme dry. Yes, around about 10 years ago, we were confronted by the macadamia seed weevil, which is also called the sagastus weevil. It was an incredibly difficult little weevil to control. So when we got this thing into the orchard, um, I figured that the sprays weren't going to uh, do much to it, and it, that was right. It was nothing was controlling it, and it had a unique way of breeding as well. It um, it seemed to be able to put the weevil into the nut and then the nut would fall to the ground and that would, um, at 10 mil, 10 mil big or so, the, the weevil would develop in the nut on the ground and then do the life cycle again. So spraying the trees was not going to help a lot because the, the flaming thing was on the ground. Some farmers were even spraying the ground. So I decided there had to be something done and I thought for a long time before I did anything, but I eventually came up with what I thought was a good idea for um, uh, trying to make an impact onto the, onto the seed weevils in the, on the ground without destroying the orchard floor. And, and the way we, most farmers and myself were doing it was mulching these small nuts on the ground that had the weevil in them. And the, the trouble with that was because of because the thing was so small, we had to run the mulches very low to the ground. And that had problems in that we were destroying our ground cover and increasing the erosion risk. The runoff from the, the orchards into the creeks was much worse. I have developed something now that will be able to mulch up sm anything small on the ground and, and the, it doesn't, the mulcher won't hurt the, the ground cover and everything will be mulched up. So I have developed that now. A mulcher set right at ground level can kill orchard ground covers. In shaded settings caused by closing tree canopies and repeated machinery traffic, orchard ground covers can be shy to return to their former vigour if excessively disturbed. Unwilling to destroy his hard work, Lance came up with an innovative idea, designing an all-in-one mulcher with a broom to sweep the nuts into the mulching blades. This allowed the mulcher to be set well above ground level and protect the valuable ground cover on the orchard floor. He quickly got a local fabricator, Dave Hunter, involved. I enlisted the help of another farmer uh, who does a lot of my work for me. I drew the plans up on the floor of his shed and, and I always, always took him over a few beers and we discussed it over a period of time and I knew that once I had him drawing up the plans on the floor, uh, we were right then. Lance and Dave tried out their first prototype in 2019 and continued to evolve the design over the next few years. Through trial and error, Lance and Dave found Y-shaped blades performed best. Okay, this is the machine set up on the Bertie Land Mulcher. The Bertie Land Mulcher has a rather large door, double skin door. It is quite a heavy door and the Bertie Land Mulcher is at a very heavy machine fits the European standards because of this door, closes everything in and it has, we had room to put our machine in here. It's driven by a hydraulic motor on this side over here and that's straight through to the tractor there. The little guard is to stop it in case we hit a tree. Uh, the height of the uh, brush is controlled by uh, a square threaded bolt here. We just undo that lock nut and turn it and it adjusts the height up and down. 
We ran it just above ground level. A little mark there is ground level. We ran it just above that in our orchard last year and it seemed to be fine. A little bit made a big difference though. Black coloured component is what Dave had a CAD, CAD drawing made of and all the other little bits and pieces were all cut with that and welded together by Dave and it all bolts together onto the, onto the machine. There's no welding onto the machine. We didn't interfere with the machine, so it's still um, under warranty by Bertie. The sweeping mulcher uses locally sourced components to ensure easy access to parts. Demonstrations of the machine are in full swing. So we did come up with a name for the machine. We called it NJAM, which means not just another mulcher. And I think that suits it down to a T, yeah.